best laid plans. Putting things aside for a rainy day is often sound advice for me and you. But in McKeesport, Pennsylvania, this bromide proved not to be true. With gasoline prices going sky high, John Kane thought he was wise to put three barrels of gas in his cellar, anticipating the next price rise. In this volatile economy, you never know what might happen. John thought he was ahead of the curve, and if needed, could give his barrels a tappin'. But gas is more volatile than price points, as John would soon learn. When the barrels in his basement blew up, and his best laid plans crashed and burned, along with his beautiful home, destroyed by the explosion in his cellar. Now John can contemplate frugality as a two-room apartment dweller. Thank you very much. I have two poems, um, and the first one's called, I've Never Done This Before. I've never done this before, written a poem and read it out loud, standing up before a crowd. I've written them, scribbled them, dashed them, hidden them. I've torn them, burned them, trashed them, hidden them. I've loved them, hated them, smashed them, hidden them. I've been a little bit hard on them, as you can see, these tiny hidden parts of me. And this is called End of Winter in New England, which is going to happen any minute now. <laughs> um, I wrote this a couple you know, recently, but OK. <laughs> Out of the clammy bedroom, the sticky, stinky flannel sheets, enough. Unlock the window latch, stuck in my stomach and bend at the knees. Wrench that window up. The screen is still there. He forgot to take them out this year. In the winter, the snowstorms stuck to the screens and sealed us in. Now the cat leaps up and knocks my hand aside, wedges her winter-stuffed self on the sill. The garden below is bleak and beautiful, exhausted perennials and empty dirt, not to mention courageous, outrageous, impossible spikes of green. His bulbs are coming up. In November, when the mums are dead, he throws armloads of bulbs in the tired earth, not with an artist's eye, but a lover's, while I make soup and dig out the flannel sheets so we can hunker down. When April comes, I strip the bed and flip the mattress all by myself while he inspects the lawn for grubs. I bundle that stale flannel up and eject it from this place like an old story I don't need anymore. What beauty will come up this year, I wonder, while the sweet, soft breeze kisses my tender arms unsweatered. Thank you. I knock on the door, though I know where you hide the key. The dog looks so happy, he comes a running to me. It feels like the old times coming home from the store, but it's not my home anymore. It's not my home. Can't sit in the kitchen. It's not my home The life that I lived here I cannot restore I've got to let go It's not my home anymore The flowers 
rivers I planted are waving soft in the breeze, but I couldn't pick them even if I said please. The car in the driveway is getting hard to ignore, but it's not my home anymore. It's not my home. Can't sit in the kitchen. Can't walk in the door. It's not my home. The life that I lived here, I cannot restore. I've got to let go. It's not my home anymore. But tell me, do you see the marks on the wall that we made in pen as the children grew tall? Does the stairway still creak? Does the faucet still leak? Does the morning sun still fill the hole? I drop off the children and I'm turning to go without any warning. All the tears start to flow. I still love the place like I loved it before, but it's not my home anymore. It's not my home. I'm hoping that someday I will have outgrown this longing. It's not my home anymore. Thank you. This song is called, I'm from uh, Southern New Hampshire, Jane Fallon. The um, song is a new song called My Daddy Was a Cowboy.
was a cowboy My daddy was a cowboy They say I left home at just 16 Looking for adventure Chasing a dream Long come a man in a pickup truck Cigarette in his mouth And his sleeves rolled up I hopped in and we pulled away Daddy was a cowboy My daddy was a cowboy They say Daddy was a cowboy They say to your eyes see everything sunrise dark skies everything look into your eyes it's worth remembering eyes reflect the beauty of the world When I kiss your lips I taste everything Something sweet Something bitter Everything When I kiss your lips It's worth Remembering that a kiss exudes the beauty of the world. Elements in nature reassemble, forces of the mind rise and fall. A lion's roar, a willow leaf's tremble. Everything resides inside us all. Now when you call my name, I hear everything. Come play. Go away, everything. Your voice has a sound, it's worth remembering. An echo of the beauty of the world. Elements in nature can reassemble. Forces of the mind just rise and fall. A lion's roar, a willow leaf's tremble. Everything resides inside us all. I can look into your eyes. See everything, sunrise, dark skies, everything, look into your eyes, it's worth remembering that eyes reflect the beauty of the world. Eyes reflect 
the beauty of the world um, I've had the great privilege of knowing a number of couples who have um, had very long marriages. My parents were um, one and my husband's uh, parents were another and one of the things that always struck me about them was their utter complete devotion to one another the last year was the hardest visits once or twice a week sometimes she'd recognize him most times would barely speak on the wall her portrait hangs from when she was just a girl old photos in a dresser draw neatly stacked the edges curled a young couple smiling arm in arm on a friday night heading downtown to the movies caught in black and white he was young and idealistic, went to fight the Spanish War, came home disillusioned, never knew what it was for. Would she remember him had time and distance intervened? But love picked up where they left off like there'd been no in-between. Life was good to us, I really can't complain. Yes, we had our hard times, loved each other just the same. At the mill, he worked the day shift. She taught nursery school at home. House echoed from the children, though they had none of their own. He built toys to climb on she drove the children home each day he'd write to the local paper when he had things to say life was good to us i really can't complain yes we had our hard times loved each other just the same Retired, finished his novel. She had her cats to love and tend. She listened to her music. He wrote poetry again. The last year was the hardest. Visits once or twice a week. Sometimes she recognized him. Most times would barely speak. He has his friends, his books, his memories to keep him company. But says it isn't quite the same without her here with me. Life was good to us, I really can't complain. Yes, we had our hard times, loved each other just the same. Thank you. To greet you today, I have to show you how a poem begins. Sometimes it begins like this. This was pumping gas this morning, and it's not my main offering for the day, but this will be my beginning. Because if, like me, you've watched the sun not rise for the last two weeks or more, it makes an impression on you. Misty lace. <laughs> Through the skies, forms to greet my morning eyes as the sun does not arise. Stealing gray, misty sighs another day. Hidden arrives. Softly muted, hushed, and close unseen birds raise their toast to misty morning's solemn host. Those were my thoughts this morning. And now I know it's gotten much better, so I'm very happy and looking forward to this afternoon. The poem I'm bringing you today is looking forward to June. Most of you know I've 
brought you a lot of poetry about my mother. This one is going to celebrate my father. And I'm very, very happy to have my wonderful, very significant other of 31 years, my husband here, father of our children, to listen. So here's Dad. I don't know as I have a poem to say goodbye to Dad. He left me long ago, sitting on a stair in the cold of night. I'd hung up the phone. The voice had told me he was gone. Before I got there or could see the precious place he used to be in my life when I was young, and early on when I'd just begun, he was the one who urged me on, told me what was needed, pushed me gently from behind, just when I was faltering like riding a bike, I didn't fall off and didn't notice when he let go. I was looking forward while he stayed behind, making sure my ride was the kind I needed for confidence to bloom and life to become my new room. He left when I was 17. I hated him for that, it seems. Took me years to reconcile. A good thing he had time to while away in life's older troubles, waiting for me to round the bend, forgive him, and go on again. He drank, and filled with angst, he visited and mourned with me over some of life's catastrophes. And I saw a human man, all frail, wrestling with his demons and fail. And though I could not come too near to help, he was still and always my father. Seeing far beyond my own horizons with his wisdoms, sight, and love. And so he left me once again on the steps in the middle of the night, miles away from my sight, finishing up his last flight, taking heaven's wings to flight. A soft kiss upon the air, sitting on that solemn stair, brushing past me as he went, kissing Vicky, heaven sent to comfort me in loneliness there bent and sorrowed in my stare. She cuddled close and said, why are you crying, mommy, as I bowed my head. And I pulled her close and opened the book. It must have been the big one. It weighed so much. The one he used to read to us from where stories tripped lightly off his tongue, from his imagination born to his in love's sleepy dorm. Before to dreams we bent, he made us stories from his head. And I said, my daddy used to tell me stories. He always let us pick, would you like the big book or the little? for the night's enjoyments trip. I think I have the big one here. Let me tell you one I remember clear. And breathed a silent goodbye, Dad, as I passed his legacy to his own, feeding the seeds that love had grown. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Um, I'm going to do a song that I uh, wrote for uh, my aunt who is at the end stages of her life and we've been having conversations lately about what might be coming next and uh, out of those conversations came this song. It's called Will I Make It Home? <clears throat> Have I lived a good life? Have I fought the good fight? Will I be forgiven for my sins? Have I lived the good book? When he takes that long look, when I reach those gates, will I get in? Will Will I rise slowly in my grave, in my grave? Will I make it 
Oh. 